This is Ash Wednesday. And with this Ash Wednesday, we have now completed all of the liturgical moments of the church year online. The phrase we use on Ash Wednesday, when we mark our foreheads with ashes this year for the first time, many of us marking our own foreheads. The phrase we hear is, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. These are the words that God spoke to Adam in Genesis after Adam had sinned. But it's not the first time Genesis mentions dust. Before Adam sinned, before Adam took from that tree, reaching beyond the limits of God and disrupting the harmony of creation, Adam was made from dust. Creature among creatures formed from the dust of God's beautiful earth, enlivened by God's own breath. Adam, the creature of the red clay. Adam was dust. And he was at home as this dust man. And then Adam, humanity, overreached and ignored God's instructions for a harmonious, peaceable life. And the rest is history and is now. And God said to those, those words to Adam, who knew full well what he had done, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And we can hear these words as punishment or as threat. We can hear them as us being sinners in the hand of an angry God. In, making, in marking ourselves with crosses, in hearing that Ash Wednesday refrain, remember that you are dust, we do wear signs of our mortality and admission of our guilt. We acknowledge in the confession, in the words of the psalm, that we need to be recreated by God. We need to be forgiven by God. We need a fresh start by God. We acknowledge that we are not the creator, but the creature, not immortal, but vulnerable, not maker, but made. This year, this Ash Wednesday, I don't know that we need that reminder, at least not as much as we have in past years when Ash Wednesday interrupts the typical flurry of human activity and takes us down a notch. This year we are already laid low. We don't need to be reminded that the wages of sin is death. Every time somebody has claimed their freedom at the cost of someone else's peace or health, death and sin have been intertwined close at hand. For almost a year, we have been doing a very Lenten thing, wearing face masks like ashen crosses, announcing to the world, take care of me and I will take care of you and maybe we will live. We are right now already so diminished, so small and powerless. Participants in a grief, we can't even really see, much less wrap our heads around. Do we really need to remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return this year? This year, I encourage you to hear this differently differently than maybe you've ever heard it before. For dust, that Genesis dust, is not only a reminder of our sin and of our death and of our brokenness, but it is also, and it is first, a reminder of our createdness and the relationship we have with the one who made us. God took care to create us, me and you, God made us out of dust and breathed God's own spirit into us and into this whole beautiful world, this world we are yearning to embrace and live in, body and soul, God made us. And that's not all. God sent Jesus into this mess, into this dusty world. And even when we didn't know how to follow him, he kept going, face set toward Jerusalem, toward the cross, to show us that this death and this dust and this mess is not the end. This creator God who created us also points us to a new creation. 
Create in me, O God, a new heart, a clean spirit, a new world, a new future, a society that is different than anything we've ever seen before. Create it, God, from the inside out. This Lent, this Ash Wednesday, I encourage you to let this dust and this ash on your forehead be a reminder of your createdness. And to remember that we are a people created who always live in the middle, in between, bookended by the acts of our miraculous creator God, creator and recreator, freer of slaves and deliverer to the promised land, first glimmer of life and firstborn of the new creation. We live in the middle and we too point our faces toward Jerusalem, not only toward the cross, but toward the new creation, toward the resurrection that is promised and that will come. We are dust and to dust we shall return. And then God will make another thing, another us, another world out of the ashes. These crosses are not only signs of our sin, signs of our death. They are also signs of our forgiveness, signs of the resurrection, and signs that we trust that God is creating something new. God makes beautiful things out of dust. God makes you, and God will make you again. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen.